Welcome back to part three of the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station Tour. In the first two parts, I showed you guys the elevated station, which is the most active, most lived in part of the station. But there's another huge section of the station that's buried under the ice that I've got to show you. Down here, you'll find the power plant, the logistics arch, fuel storage, and the vehicle maintenance facility. There's also the ice tunnels, but those will have to wait to be in a later video. I'll show you this layout again as I walk you through it, but let's get this tour started at the beer can, the junction between the elevated station and the subsurface sections. So once you get to the bottom of the stairs of the beer can, you can now take this tunnel over here all the way down to the power plant, the logistics arch, the fuel arch, and the vehicle maintenance facility. So I apologize, it is a little dark down here in the tunnels, but it's the only way to get to the power plant and the water treatment plant without actually going outside. So here we are, two big doors. We use a tag in tag out procedure when entering the plant. This is so we can quickly determine how many people are inside if there's an emergency. With big engines and a lot of fuel around, there are very real risks, not to mention the CO2 fire suppression system. If you hear the CO2 discharging, you better get out fast. There are three diesel generators in the power plant, and each one is cycled between being active, being on standby, and being down for maintenance. Our current power consumption is about 600 kilowatts, which is typical for the station. As you can imagine, the power plant generates a lot of heat. Obviously, heat is valuable in a place like the South Pole, so this heat is transferred to an antifreeze solution and pumped throughout the station. So in this way, the power plant is both our source of heat and electricity, and everyone on station is very aware of how much we depend on it to survive. So if we come down that hallway further, past the power plant, we actually come here to the logistics arch which is this giant metal arch underneath the snow. I think there's probably about 20 feet of snow on top of this right now. Um, but this is basically all our long-term storage and our waste. So all our waste is sorted into landfill, recycling, uh, cardboard. There's wood scrap, electronic scrap, uh, sanitary waste, ferrous metals. We basically try to sort everything as best we can to the best of our abilities. Um, this building here is where the supply and logistics office is, upstairs. And on the lower floor, actually I'll take you in there right now, is the do not freeze area. So the ambient temperature in here is the same as the ice all around it, which is about negative 55 Fahrenheit. And uh, anything in here obviously is gonna be frozen at that temperature. So if you, something that can't be frozen, like for instance, uh, a gallon of bleach or a carton of beer or something that you don't want to freeze and burst you have to put it in here and I'll t show you what this looks like all right obviously big heavy freezer door right here the stairway up to the supply offices right there and then we have the big interior of the do not freeze storage Way down there you can see Tony. This is where she works. If you saw my interview with her, this is where we did it, right here. Go check out my interview with her and kind of, kind of get a better idea of how this whole area works because this was her job over the winter of 2021. So, I'm going to go back outside. She gave me a dirty look, so I'm gonna go back outside to the main logistics arch. And, so as I said, we have the waste separated, sorted right here. This all gets compacted and sealed and then is either flown out or usually I believe it's tracked out now on what's called the South Pole Overland Traverse, which is basically a road train of a bunch of tracked vehicles that make their way from McMurdo Station on the coast to here at the South Pole Overland. Um, that route was only just found and basically made safe about 15 years ago and even every year it has to be rechecked to make sure the glaciers didn't shift and make something dangerous. That is a much more efficient way to bring in heavy supplies like all the fuel we need for the generators over winter and it's also efficient for bringing out waste and other heavy, uh, heavy cargo that we need to ship out. Um, but as you can see as we come further down the logistics arch we have three layers of storage, all the food that we eat is mainly down here. We grow a little bit of it in the greenhouse, but most of it is frozen here. So pretty much all the food we eat is frozen at some stage. So not a whole lot of fresh food, but that's just the way it goes. That's the logistics of it. Uh, ooh, here's some ice cream right here. What is this? Uh, Rocky Road, we've got a ton of Rocky Road ice cream. 
Uh, I know because I've eaten a bunch of it this winter. Another interesting thing you might notice is you see how much water vapor uh, is condensing as soon as I breathe out. Let me do it towards the light here so you can see. A ton, right? So it's so dry here, the air, or so cold that the air will not hold any humidity. So as soon as you breathe out, that water vapor condenses like pretty much immediately. And it doesn't just disappear. Here in the logistics arch, it actually forms water crystals here on the side. Now, some of this is from people's breath. Some of it is just from water vapor kind of outgassing from the supplies that are all here. Um, it's kind of like freezer burn. If you've ever seen like frost kind of gather on food in your deep freeze or freezer, that's pretty much what it is, but just the big, you know, elephant sized version of that. So you get all these, uh, these crystals that form, they're really pretty and they're really fun to also knock off. Anyway, really satisfying. You could spend uh, probably a whole season in this arch alone, knocking off, knocking off all the crystals. Now, this has been built up over years. I've had some people ask, you know, hey, uh, do you ever have to go through and purposely knock these crystals off? Does it get too heavy? And if you think about it, there's, you know, 20 feet of snow on top of the arch already. These crystals weigh almost nothing compared to that. So it's not a problem for the arch's, uh, you know, structural integrity to have these all sitting here, as far as I know. Uh, and it takes so long for them to build up that we don't really make a point out of, you know, clearing them out. But it is fun to do. At the back of the logistics arch is this hallway, which leads back to the fuel arch. Now, if you imagine, we run on generator power here exclusively. We have three different one megawatt uh, Caterpillar generators. Only one of them's running at a time, but still massive amount of fuel consumption. I think it's usually about 45 gallons of fuel an hour. And if you think about that times nine months, that's how much fuel we need over the winters. And I believe there are 45 massive steel tanks and each one holds 10,000 gallons. And so you're talking about 450 gallon, thousand gallons of fuel uh, back there in the fuel arch. And that's also the same fuel used for all the aircraft, uh, for all the tractor vehicles we have, and also for the generators. So it's kind of like a one fuel fits all situation down here, which helps immensely with the logistics of getting fuel in the first place. So yeah, that is the logistics arch, the do not freeze area, and the fuel arch. I didn't go back in the fuel arch because I don't think I'm even allowed back there. Uh, I've never actually seen it myself, and I don't know where the light switch is either. Continuing on from there, uh, the next doorway over is to go to the vehicle maintenance facility and the carpenter shop. This way actually leads to the outside. You can see the sunlight kind of streaming through at the end there, and that's kind of where the cargo comes in from either the uh, Overland Traverse crew, the track, uh, cargo crew or the airplanes comes into the cargo office right there all right but let's actually go over to the vehicle maintenance facility and see if i can show you guys around over there all right so again vehicle maintenance facility or vehicle arch uh, is another arch slightly smaller than the logistics arch but similar concept it's under snow right now, uh, held up by these uh, arched metal girder structure things. Okay. And then, come in here. This is the carpenter slash uh, sheet metal workshop, things like that. Um, we do have one carpenter over the winter who does all the carpentry work. He's kind of like a multitasker also. He does a lot of the facilities work. Uh, but yeah, this is the carpenter shop. And then through here is the vehicle maintenance facility. There's the offices right here. And then the reason I come down here most often is to check the AED. We have AEDs all around the station. Uh, that's an automatic electronic defibrillator. Uh, in case anybody has a heart attack or goes into a ventricular fibrillation, we can defibrillate them. Uh, but yeah, that's most of the reason why I come down here. Okay, and then Come in here to the garage. And right now they've got a lot of the vehicles out for a flight that just came in. <clears throat> so they can offload the cargo from it easily. Uh, but you got the LNC right here. 
you got the big cat right here, uh, and then you got the small cat down at the other end, which has the little Wally -E, uh, tag on it. And the other ones are out right now, including the snowmobile. But this is basically where all the vehicles get worked on, the maintenance gets done, uh, the oil gets changed, the, sometimes the engines get rebuilt as well. Let me take you for a quick walk around here. Now I am wearing my jacket just because I came in from the uh, the other arch where it's you know ambient temperature of negative 55, the ice temperature, but it's not actually cold in here. It's actually pretty warm, so nobody has to work in <laughs> icy conditions. All right, heading back out through here. I can just show you guys a little bit of the shop. I believe there's some machining and some welding tools here. Any kind of Parts that need to be fabricated for the vehicles can be done in here as well. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty extensive setup. Pretty good, pretty nice garage from what I've heard from others. Um, pretty well kept and well stocked. So yeah, that's the vehicle maintenance facility.